Hello everyone, welcome to Shada TV. I'm Pooja and you're watching Electronic Educational Content. We'll learn about research. What is research, why we do research and the most important, how we do it. So we have divided this course into different episodes and in each episode you'll know about each aspect of research and its steps. So let's begin. So the term research, it is comprises of two words, re and search. Re means again and search means to find out. So whenever we add new knowledge to our pre-existing knowledge, we do it through research. So research is something which people undertake to find out new things in a very systematic manner, which ultimately leads to a new knowledge. According to Cresswell, who is a researcher, research is a process of steps to collect and analyze information to increase our understanding of a topic or an issue. So we can say that you know research is an inquiry and investigation. It is systematic and methodological. And third, it increases our knowledge. So all the researcher they share the same fundamental goal, which is the creation of new knowledge or creation of new ideas. So this research it is a very cyclic process. Like it initiated with a question and it is also concluded with a question. Some of you must be thinking that why you should do research? What is the motivation to undertake the research? First of all, you could be to acquire a research degree. Second, it could be for the passion. And some do it for the intellectual satisfaction too. Some do it to solve some unsolved problems of the society. So in our next episode, you will learn about the objective and characteristics of research. Till then, please like, share and subscribe. And bye. See you later. So don't you all love to learn new things? Well, of course you do, right? So hello and welcome to our second episode of our course, Learning Research. I'm Pooja and today we'll learn about some research objectives. But before that, let's take a quick recap of our first episode. So in our previous episode, we learned about some basics of research, like what is research and why do people undertake research. So let's move forward to our second episode and learn about its objectives and characteristics. So let's start with research objectives. So the first objective of research is to gain familiarity with a new phenomena or to develop a new insight into a phenomena. Second is to review and synthesize the existing problems. Third is to investigate some existing problem. Fourth is to offer solution to that problem. So our fifth objective is to explore and analyze some more general issues like that. And the final and sixth objective is to generate new knowledge. So let's learn about some desirable characteristics of research. So the first characteristic of research is objectivity. Like your research should be free of biases, prejudice and subjective errors. Means as a researcher, your data shouldn't be affected by your own knowledge or by your own opinions. So it should be bias free and should be objective. So the second characteristic of a research is reliability. So reliability in research means consistency. It means to what extent your research will produce the same result. Which means with the same situation and same method, your result should be the same. Third characteristic is replicability, which is a quite different. Like with a different situation and a different method, when your results are the same, it is replicability. So the fourth characteristic of research is validity. Validity in research means being accurate means doing what you're supposed to do or what you intended to do. Like the procedures you are doing, the test you are doing should be accurate. Our fifth characteristic is generalizability, means to what extent your research can be applied to a larger population. Sixth characteristic is cyclic, like I said it before. The research, it begins with a question and also ends with a question. So our next characteristic is empirical. It means it should be based on real life experiences, it should be based on real life observations. And last but not the least, our research should be systematic. 
So systematic means you have to follow a procedure like one step should follow another step. These all were the characteristics of research. In our next episode, we'll learn about the basic eight steps of research. So till then, bye. And if you like this episode, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you. So as the great scientist Albert Einstein said, if we knew what we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? So welcome back to our series of learning research. Hello, I'm Pooja Negi and welcome to the third episode of our course. And in this episode, we'll learn about the basic eight steps of doing research. So now we will learn about the basic steps you need to follow while doing a research. So the first step is formulation of a problem. You must have a research problem or a research question before you while conducting a research. The second step is the literature review. So what does literature mean? It is any theory on any particular topic. So before conducting a research, you must have a very good insight and knowledge about your topic. So we'll read the books or any other research papers which is uh, related to your topic so that you can have more knowledge of what you're gonna do. So our third step is developing a hypothesis. So what is a hypothesis? It is a tentative answer to a question. You know, at the end of your research, it could be true or it could be false. So hypothesis is a very important thing because it will give you a frame and a method and a very tentative idea of your research. So our fourth step is forming a research design. So forming a research design is very important because through that you will get an idea of how you're gonna do your research. So you'll design your whole research process. So our next step would be data collection. So here we'll decide the tools we are gonna use while conducting a research. So it could be questionnaire or interview or anything you will decide. And the next step is the data analysis or the data interpretation. So here will the data we have collected, we'll analyze it and we'll interpret it and only then we can conclude our research, right? So our last step is report making. So in report making, you'll prepare the report, you'll see all the data, you will conclude it and at last you're gonna present it. Thank you and I hope you're getting to learn a lot from this series. If you are, then please like, share and subscribe our channel and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. college, research used to be a very tedious topic for me. But soon enough, it became a very exciting topic for me. So hello and welcome to the fourth episode of our course, Learning Research. I'm Pooja and in this episode, we'll learn about the types of research. So on the basis of objective, research is of five types. Descriptive, correlational, explanatory, exploratory, and experimental. On the basis of outcome, it is fundamental and applied. And on the basis of process, it is qualitative and quantitative. So on the basis of logic, it can be of two types, which is deductive and inductive. And on the basis of inquiry mode, it is of two types, which is structured and unstructured. And on the basis of idea, it is empirical and conceptual. So our first type of research is quantitative research. It is basically in numbers and it's also very objective. It is done superficially and it has a very deductive approach. Second is qualitative. It is subjective in nature. It includes a very deep, in-depth study and it is inductive in approach. So a third type of research is inductive research. So it works towards being particular to generalization and it works towards discovering something. Our fourth type of research is deductive research and it works towards generalization to being particular and it is basically about proving something. So our next type of research is descriptive research. In this, we'll collect the data and we'll analyze it and we will present it as it is. So for example, we can say that girls do perform better in the studies. So it answers what? To answer why, we will move towards our next research, which is explanatory research, which actually explains that why girls perform better in studies. 
So the work of explanatory research is to answer why. So our next type of research is exploratory research which is done to explore something or to gain new knowledge. It is also known as feasibility and pilot study research and it is always done in the beginning. Our next research is experimental research which is based on cause and effect. So these were the seven major types of research we learned today and in the next episode we'll learn about sampling and why it is so important. Till then goodbye and take care and if you like this episode please don't forget to like share and subscribe. Thank you. So hello and welcome to the fifth and final episode of our series of learning research. So let's get into it. So before moving towards the types of sample, first we'll try to understand it what a sample is. So a sample is basically a subset of population which is selected to represent the population as a whole. It is basically of two types, which is probability sample and non-probability sample. So probability sample is of four types, which is simple random, systematic random, stratified and multi-stage cluster. Then comes the non-probability sampling, which is of four types, convenience, theoretical, quota and snowball. So first is probability sampling. So in this sampling, researchers select some random people from the population by setting some a few criteria for it. And in this sampling, everybody has equal opportunity and equal probability of being selected for the sampling. So a second type of method, which is non-probability sampling. In this, the researcher has two criteria according to which the researcher selects the sample. So here the sampling or the population doesn't have the equal opportunity or the equal chance of getting selected for the sample. So here the researcher selects the sample according to their own choice, according to their own convenience for the sampling. So that's all for this episode and course. I hope you loved and enjoyed it. And if you did, please comment down and thank you for your patience and time and hope you loved it. And please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much.